Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. We're going to be doing some more ladder grinding here with Boros Humans. Uh, if you're new to my channel, thank you so much again for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend of yours. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back and supporting me. It really does mean the world to me. There will be a link here in the description for the deck list, both on untapped.gg and moxfield.com. And then there also will be a link for all of my other videos. So if you want to check those out, check out the description. Um, I do want to give a shout out here to my members. So thank you so much again for becoming members and helping to support the channel. If you would like to help support me and my channel, this is a great way to do so for as little as $1.99 a month to get early access to my content. And then if you'd like to do that, here's exactly how. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Okay, so let's jump into the deck. Uh, no changes here since yesterday, just been really happy with it. Uh, let's just jump in. And again, if you haven't seen, um, or if you'd like to see other videos here in the uh, series, the link will be in the description. So hope you guys have had a great day so far. And uh, yeah, just, you know, really just been happy grinding ladder here with this deck. It's been going really well. Opening hand looks great. Um, yeah, let's start with recruitment officer here. If we had like, uh, Resolute Reinforcements in hand, we would have played Warden first. Okay, nice pickup there. And we can kind of set up here for Knight Errant next turn. Oh, this is great. So it's a nice pickup. Now we can just go for the full five next turn with Knight Errant, assuming they don't use any kind of removal. Yeah, looks like we're uh, one turn ahead here on the Boros Convoke deck. And then if we end up picking up a land, these Brutal Cathars will be really good. So I think, I mean, triple Brutal Cathars is probably not necessary. I think grabbing Veteran might just be like a safe hedge here just to make sure that they don't uh, overrun us. This way, we've, if we draw into a land and we don't want to like Brutal Cathar, we can just double spell next turn. Okay, and very nice pick up there. I think we do want a Brutal Cathar here. I mean, they're representing quite a bit of damage if they draw into like Imidane's next turn. And I think we don't want to like do like a full send here because if they have like land plus one one plus imidanes, they're pushing two, four, six, eight, ten, thirteen. I guess it's not lethal, so we're probably okay, I guess, to to all in.
Yeah, I guess we're just pushing 4, 10, 12. Yeah, I guess since they can't all in next turn, this feels pretty good. Then we can just go like Copper Coat or Brutal Cathar. Now we can just lean on him. That'll work. Yeah, so far this deck has just been really good. Like, I like all the elements that Mono White Humans brings to the table, and being able to have the haste buff from Recruiter is just amazing. All right, we've got enough land. We've got reinforcements into Night Errant. Feels pretty good. All right, could be up against Slesny Enchantments here. <clears throat> yeah, looks like we are. But I think that reinforcements into Night Errant is better here than trying to just pitch a card to Otherworldly Light. We do want to be ready for like their Calyx and all that, but let's get some creatures on the board. So now we can march plus Iganjo. Um, do we want to do that or just kind of develop some more on the board here? Yeah. I think the naturalist is going to be a huge problem. Um, I guess we can get in and see what they do and then just kind of go from there. All right, so let's exile the Kami and Iganjo, the naturalist. Let's make sure we tap our mana right here. And I think we get rid of Officer here because we can still use Warden to fly over. And we've still got stuff to do. Fight rigging is pretty good in this deck, or it certainly can be. I 
Okay, so let's just spend this turn developing. See, uh, let's tap this one. That's actually good because we can use that plus Imidane's next turn. Okay, so they can get Michiko, I guess depending on what's under this fight rigging. If it's like another Michiko, it's pretty rough. Calyx, okay. See, I think we just take it here and then just reverse sweep back. They'll have two blockers that can block here and here. They'll be taking three, five, seven, nine, eleven. Yeah, they're dead. I think they're still dead because we'll have the veteran off the top. I guess they block these three and then we have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Yeah, lethal. Unless they have like March, no, I mean, March isn't gonna do it. They don't have any other cards. I think that's gotta do it. Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of an interesting game where I wasn't sure if we like waste all of our removal early like we did um, or like use half of it um, but we like really don't want them to get a foothold there so so I feel like either of those cards can get out of control if they have um, the uh, Michiko's reign which they did end up having like the Kami is super dangerous because it already has trample And like lifelink, you never want to deal with. Okay, blue white control or possibly Jess guy. Um, since we're just gonna warden, I think next turn. Let's just go. I guess veteran here. It doesn't really matter. And here I'm just kind of like uh, hedging a little bit instead of like putting both veterans down in case they have um, lockdown on three, just so we don't, just kind of hedging like what we've got basically. Um, the life is not a huge consideration here. I think I want officer later when we have more mana if they like wipe everything else. So probably just go warden here. And I think this deck runs like 11 main deck counter spells. I think seven of which are active with two mana up. So there's a decent chance we get countered again, but I think we just got to fight through it.
Um, I guess if I wanted to have one of them countered, I'd start with Veteran. Okay, the fact they let that through like makes me think that they might have lockdown on three. So I'm a little bit hesitant to run out another officer here. Oh, it's so bad. Yeah, I think we try to save some of this for like the rebuild. A really good one on top. Yeah, it's just so backbreaking if they just like have the lockdown next turn. Yeah, but now since they didn't, like, kind of makes us overextend a little bit more. Um, I think we probably go Vanguard here just because we're trying to set up for a Knight Errant next turn. We want to get a little bit of damage in. So I don't want to, like, use all of my one drops here. Okay, so let's just lead out with attacks here. I guess they're still stuck on land, so they've got all action in hand. I think we still only want to lead out with one officer. Like, losing everything is just rough. As much as it sucks to kind of slow play it a little bit. So here's the test if they have the lockdown. Okay. Well, that's a nice pickup. And I think we just knight errant for three instead of overextending here. Because they, they could easily have like board wipe next turn, but we get like a little bit of a refill this way. And that's really nice. So definitely not overextending. Next turn, if we have land, we can... Oh, this is interesting, actually. So, I mean, they almost certainly have some form of removal in hand. But if we don't draw land and just play Recruiter next turn, they have nothing. We've got 3, 8, 11... Actually, we have lethal already, so that's fine. They probably have at least one piece of removal here. Yeah. But I think overextending there more than, like, playing a one drop there I don't think is right either. Okay, so that's a nice pickup. And I think this turn we Vanguard, and next turn we set up for the Recruiter. Like this is kind of getting back to what I was saying in my last video, how you always want to make sure that like Recruiter is like the last card you play. Um, so I think let's, we could even do another Knight Errant refill here. Although I kind of want to push this turn and get their life a little bit lower. Hmm. 
Yeah, I think I'm actually going to go for the, the Knight Errant refill again. Actually, let's see. Let's let's check to see if we hit on this um, map token. Because that will affect my choice. Okay, March is a nice top deck. Oh, man. I didn't mean to hit Cavern. Oh, good God. Auto Tapper is so awful. <sighs> okay, that was a mistake. Um, all right, well, we'll try it. They'll probably get countered. We'll push a little bit of damage. It's okay, but we obviously didn't want to tap Cavern of Souls there. So, like, now we drop them to six. So... Even if they board wipe next turn, we have six damage guaranteed if they have like Sunfall here. So they're still dead. Okay, and if they don't have that, then that's just it. Because they have like um, Emperor, possibly even Emperor plus March. But they're still super dead. Yeah, because even Emperor plus March, like if we attack with everything, they. Emperor of the Vanguard, and then they march like one of these guys. So we're pushing three, yeah, they're super dead. Nice. Yeah, opening hand looks awesome. But now we just do reinforcements at the end of their turn since we have the cavern. Like if we if we didn't have cavern here, we try to like probably force it. Um, well, actually, I suppose it wouldn't doesn't really matter here. Like if we had played warden on turn one, then we would try to main phase reinforcements on two if we didn't have cavern. Or either way. I think we marched the Celestis on our turn. Just to like slow them down. Because they, they're trying to set up for like a turn four board wipe here. And like taking out their Celestis really sets them back. So I think we lose probably Officer. I don't know, having another officer is nice in case they do have a board wipe and we can start rebuilding. Like, it's a good combo with Cathar. Reinforcements is always kind of good, but it's nice if they're a bit lower. So I think I probably march for reinforcements here. The only problem is, is that, like, I guess they could still, like, if they have lockdown next turn, it's still awkward. But I think getting rid of Celestis is worth it.
So like with that, I don't think we officer because if they have like lockdown, we just lose everything. Okay, gotta take a pizza out super quick. All right, so they did have the lockdown. Yeah, lockdown in the sunfall is pretty rough. I guess you could argue like is it worth getting rid of their celestis i think it is though i mean like they draw so many cards and like yeah i, I don't know maybe that was wrong maybe we just like let them have the celestis there So now they've got us covered here with demo field. Um, we're hoping to like pick a maybe like drawn to like knight errant or something like that. Just kind of get something going. We could also like top deck another march to get our lockdown out of the way. Oof. Lockdown number two is super rough. <clears throat> okay. We still have a lot of decent cards we can draw here, though. Like, if we top deck um, Imidanes, we can try to go for, like, train troops and build up a board.
So now we're in a pretty rough spot, but I mean, again, like we have decent top decks so we can draw. Yeah, because if we get March, we either get rid of the Emperor or deal with one of the lockdowns, start drawing cards with their Officer. As long as they don't like mill us out with Jace or something like that, we're doing okay. Not sure if we play the land here. I mean, I guess it doesn't really play around anything. Like they would need to have like two no more lies to stop it. Man, all the memory deluges. Whew, just getting buried in card advantage here. This is probably over, but like, I still wouldn't give up yet. Like, that's a really nice draw. Maybe we play it before dropping the land, just so, like they don't know what's in our hand, possibly. I don't think it really changes much here, but it's like three steps ahead is super good. Now we're probably out of it. Yeah, I think um, even if we drew like Imidanes and they didn't have a counter spell, like they're gonna draw a bunch of cards. I think we're basically done now. Okay, yeah, so I think in hindsight, probably getting rid of their um, Celeste, this was probably wrong because I think that like not only did we spend an extra card to get rid of it but like they definitely had lockdown and so it's kind of interesting I, I was thinking I think I probably valued it too much so maybe if I were to do that game over just uh, save the uh, the March I don't know if we would have won but it definitely would have been a more interesting game I think okay uh, opening hand looks great So here's an interesting choice. We could uh, choose if we want to march this right now, just to avoid the counter that it would give the uh, next creature. Prevent some damage. I guess the thing is, like, if they have Slickshot show off on two, 
we probably want to march that instead. So maybe we wait. Problem is if like they don't have show off and they have something else, like we can't really respond. I guess we can get rid of their, their tutu or whatever. Yeah, maybe we wait here to see what they've got. But I think it's also like a decent argument in just like doing it now to get rid of the Kumano. Okay, so they're they're waiting on slick shot. <clears throat> I think given the fact they're waiting on slick shot, let's hang on to our march. We're gonna probably hold that up for next turn. Yeah, like we ideally want them to commit. So like this is kind of nice because now we can go like Brutal Cathar into holding up March for the slick shot. So I think that's probably the play. So instead of marching now. Yeah, because I think Knight Errant is a little too dangerous of a play here. If they have removal for Brutal Cathar, I mean, that's certainly possible. But I think we have to respect this. Um, I think we've got to respect the show off. And then we want to try to wait until they invest a little bit in it. Um, with Ancestral, we could get rid of it now so they don't get the extra card draw. But I feel like they've got more stuff they want to throw onto this thing. So I think we let it ride. Now we can remove it. That'll work. Gotta have patience, I guess. All right, so yeah, overall really happy with this um, this set of games. I think that, yeah, that, that game against Azorius Control, I probably did misplay, and we probably could have held the um, the march for a temporary lockdown or something else. But let's take a look at the stats. All right, so we are now 68% win rate, 21 wins, and 10 losses. With the most recent version of this deck, we're at... 80% win rate, 12 wins and 3 losses with adding back in all the removal. So I think this is kind of a bit more true to form. I am going to include this kind of full picture though because, you know, I mean there's been a number of changes and it's kind of good to include as many matchups as possible. But I'm very happy with this deck so far. I think it's really working very well. So yeah, check out the rest of the playlist if you're interested. It should be in the description and we will see you guys in the next one. I appreciate you. Thank you guys. And you guys are awesome.